When your friend got hurt while playing, if he is bleeding, then immediately clean the wound with antiseptic cream and the wound should be tightly bound with band-aid. Some of the health problems should be treated immediately to relieve the patient from agony and pain. These type of treatments are called first aids. In this lesson, we will deal about the first aids for sunstroke and snake bites. Do you remember about thermal receptors? Why and how they function? When the outside temperature is high, the hot thermal receptors are stimulated and this results in increased blood flow to the skin. The sweat glands extract water and salt from the blood and produce more sweat. So, there will be increase in the sweat. When sweat evaporates due to heat, it cools the body. On the other hand, when the outside temperature is low, the cold thermal receptors become active and this results in reduction of blood flow to the skin. So, we sweat less and this helps in the reduction of heat in the body. But this heat controlling mechanism is lost in severe conditions. Suppose, when a person is exposed to severe hot conditions, then there will be increased in sweating. So, body will extract more and more water and salts from the blood. As a result, lots of water is lost from the body. This is called dehydration. There are actually different stages to it. First one, if the person faints suddenly working in hot conditions, then it leads to heat syncope. Then immediately that person should be shifted to a cool place and allowed to rest and cool water or fruit juices should be given for drinking. In the second case, person complains of severe pain and cramps in the legs while working in extreme hot conditions. This condition is called heat cramps. This occurs due to loss of sodium chloride or the common name for sodium chloride is the salt. Cramps Temporary partial paralysis of habitually or excessively used muscles must have occurred to you one or the other time by sitting in one posture for a long time. It would be relieved by gentle massage. Similarly, the person affected with heat cramps should also be given gentle massage after moving him to cool place and as he lost lots of salt, water mixed with salt should be given. In the third case, very prolonged working in hot conditions will lead to heat exhaustion. This can be either due to loss of water or salt. If the heat exhaustion is due to loss of water, then the person complains of intense thirst and fever. If first aid is not given immediately, then patient may lose consciousness and go to coma. So, the patient must be moved to a cool place and large quantities of cool water and fruit juices should be given as he lost lots of water. If he is unable to drink, then he should be taken to a hospital and sterile glucose should be given into his blood vessels. If the heat exhaustion is due to loss of salt, then the person complains of severe muscle cramps, diarrhea and vomitings. As it is due to loss of salt but not of water, the person doesn't complain of thirst or fever. The patient should be moved to a cool place and cool water with salt and 
salted fruit juices should be given salt tablets also can be given if he is unable to drink then he should be taken to a hospital the fourth one and the severe case of dehydration is called the sunstroke or heat stroke this occurs in mid summer due to hot sun the person will have headache dizziness visual disturbances fever and also low bp there will be no sweating from the body in such cases the patient should be moved into a cool place all the extra clothing should be removed and the body should be wiped with a cool wet towel and wet cloth must be covered over the body if fan is available then it should be switched on this reduces the body temperature this process should be continued till the body temperature is reduced to 101 degrees fahrenheit to 102 degrees fahrenheit the patient should be given adequate bed rest till the body temperature becomes normal if not treated at this stage the person goes into coma and may even die this is because of the failure of heat controlling mechanisms in the body okay now we are going to discuss how should we treat the snake bites first we should remember that not all snakes are poisonous before treating snake bite it must be ascertained whether it is a poisonous snake or not a non poisonous snake bite looks like you and the blood that comes out usually clots outside the site where the snake has bitten a poisonous snake leaves one or two fang marks which look like pin pricks at the site where it has bitten blood and serum will be oozing out of the wound initially severe local pain numbness tingling sensation and local swelling redness are observed common poisonous snakes in india are indian cobra naja naja king cobra ophiophagus hana common indian crate bangarus cerulus banded crate bangarus fasciatus saw scaled viper echis carinata russell's viper vipera russelli and sea snakes other snakes which we see commonly in water on trees and land are poisonous to small animals but not to man when the snake bites it injects venom through its fangs into our body the snake venom contains chemical substances called toxins there are two types of toxins one affects the nervous system and hence they are called neurotoxins and the other affects the blood vessels and the blood cells they rupture the walls of the blood vessels and the blood cells especially red blood cells such toxins are called hemolytic toxins cobra and crate venom has neurotoxins and damage the nervous system viper venom contains hemolytic toxins the sea snake venom paralyzes the muscles if the venom contains neurotoxins there will be drooping of eyelids faulty speech unsteady gait breathing trouble and even paralysis may be observed these symptoms are seen in about 2 hours after the snake bite if the venom contains 
hemolytic toxins there will be severe blood loss that is hemorrhage local swelling and severe pain due to the loss of blood heart functions erratically and may even stop in case of a poisonous snake bite the person must be allowed to rest and shifted to a less crowded place care must be taken not to allow the poison to get absorbed into the body any venom outside the site of injury should be wiped with a wet cloth about 5 cm above the bite towards the direction of the heart a pressure bandage or a cloth must be applied tightly this is called a tourniquet this will reduce the flow of the blood towards the heart and distribution of poison if no medical help is available then the site of injury should be cut and blood should be sucked out depending on the time after the bite about 50% of poison can be removed by this method it is not very useful after 2 hours of the snake bite person who is sucking out the venom should not have any injuries on his lips and in his mouth if the patient has breathing problems then mouth to mouth respiration should be given nowadays anti snake venoms are available we have already discussed how the anti venoms are prepared the anti venom comes in the form of a powder just before use it is dissolved in sterile distilled water and injected into the veins of the patient the antibodies present in the anti venom preparation bind to the toxins of the venom and neutralize the action of venom if the snake is identified then anti venom to that particular snake is given if the snake is not identified then a polyvalent anti snake venom is injected this contains anti venom to several known snakes patient is also given a mild sedative and drugs to prevent shock reactions Every year 15000 people die due to snake bites in our country. This is because of ignorance, superstitions and lack of proper medical facility. The belief that mantras will cure snake and scorpion bites is one of the reason for many deaths. This leads to the delay in giving proper medical care to the patient. It must be mentioned that some snakes are poisonous. One must not kill the snakes immediately after seeing them. Most of the snakes are harmless. Indiscriminate killing of snakes disturbs the ecological balance and increases the rat population. This is much more dangerous than killing the snakes because rat causes great damage to the crops and stored food material.